Hello, my name is Charlie, and I am a medical student at the Yale School of Medicine. Today, I'd like to introduce you to RemNote and how I've used it to create a knowledge repository. A quick disclaimer, I am not being paid by RemNote in any way, and I'm not affiliated with them. I just really like their stuff. Another disclaimer is that this is not a how-to video per se, in that I won't be teaching you how to use RemNote. You can go to the website for that. But rather, how I've used it and why I like it. So I hope you find this helpful, and enjoy! First of all, what is RemNote? Now, if you imagine your knowledge base as a house you wish to build, your house of knowledge, if you will, you really need to build it in two steps. First, you create an underlying structure, and then you add the details to that structure. So traditional note-taking apps like Evernote or even Microsoft Word can help you create that structure. Whereas apps like Anki, which uses space repetition or other note card apps like it, are useful in cementing in the details onto that structure. Now, RemNote combines both of these features into one app. In addition, RemNote helps you formalize mental schemas of information. Schema is a kind of element of uh, cognitive theory developed in the 1930s. Basically, they're units of information that's organized in our mind. And different people might categorize and organize information differently. Going back to our analogy, a schema is a kind of blueprint of the house you wish to build. Now, RemNote makes constructing information schemas very easy, and I'll demonstrate what I mean. Here is my RemNote homepage, which includes my knowledge base. Now, as you can see on the right over here, there are several documents and it's an absolute mess. What is more useful are the directories on the left, which is how I've organized this information. For example, in my neuroanatomy directory, I've included documents related to all these neuroanatomical structures in the nervous system. So let's look at one document, say headache, as a case example. As you can see, my headache schema involves first dividing headache syndromes into primary and secondary headaches. What's cool about RemNote is that you can zoom into elements within your schema. For example, within primary headaches, I have these different types of headaches. So now I have a schema for migraines over here embedded within my schema for primary headaches. Schemas within schemas. I can also reorganize my schema pretty intuitively. For example, within my migraine schema, I have this concept called the scoop, so snoop criteria, which are elements in the patient's presentation that will make you worry about a secondary cause of the headache. So maybe one day I think this is better suited within my schema for secondary headaches. I just drag this bullet point and drop it elsewhere here. And you'll notice that all of that bullet point's children follow that point. Now you can imagine that this would be pretty useful if you have a really complex knowledge structure with lots of points and subpoints. What I've always found to be missing in some traditional note-taking apps is that what if an element of one topic references a different topic? For example, in my trigeminal neurology schema, I mentioned that pain is present in a distribution of the trigeminal nerve, or cranial nerve 5. But my cranial nerve 5 schema is located under my neuroanatomy directory. What RemNote allows me to do is reference other concepts, so that I can just click into the link I've created, and I can read more about the distribution of cranial nerve 5, where it lives within that neuroanatomy directory. So far, we've talked about how RemNote helps us create that knowledge structure for building our house of knowledge. And the main advantage is that it incorporates our mental schemas into its features and allows us to link and reference different concepts within that structure. The result is kind of like a house structure full of buttresses and extra support beams linking one wall to another, to the roof, to the floor, creating a stronger structure overall. Now we move on to the space repetition aspect. You'll notice that I have a queue of note cards waiting for me here, and if I click into it, you'll see many features similar to what you'll see in a traditional note card app. We have a prompt here, and we click to get the answer. Depending on how well you knew the answer and how well you did before with that question in the past, the app determines when you'll next be tested on that information. But how does, does RemNote create these note cards in the first place? I remember when I was using Anki is that sometimes I'd make note cards out of my notes, and that was a very time-consuming process. 
Now RamNote makes note cards automatically for you based on how you structure your notes. Going back to the headache example, you'll see that under each concept there are italicized words followed by two colons. RamNote understands that this makes the words before the two colons as descriptors, which makes it the front of the note card, and the words after the two colons the contents of the descriptor, which becomes the back. Here's a preview of this particular note card here. Some extra features I found useful. The second pane splits my window into two, so I can reference two documents at once. This is useful for referencing and linking without leaving my primary window. Another feature is the ability to write equations using the markup language LaTeX, which is useful in statistical courses. Here is an example of me when I'm, I was trying to learn statistical learning, which is a branch of machine learning, uh, and that involved a lot of uh, mathematical equations, and I used LaTeX to write those out. And LaTeX is, is a pretty easy markup language to learn, and you can find tutorials online for that. And that's all. So I really wish I had discovered this app before my step exams, because it's made learning so much more fun for me. So I hope you benefit from this, and good luck.